This little SUV beside me is the Mitsubishi ASX ES Street, which sees a new appearance package for what is Mitsubishi's smallest SUV. It's been a long term favorite and competes against the Kia Seltos, but there are more affordable options hitting the market now in the form of the GWM Havel Jolion and the MG ZST. So does the oldest newest car still have what it takes to be a fun urban dweller? Stay watching to find out. There are six grades for the ASX and the model on test here is the ES grade with a street accessory pack, which is priced from $30,490 before on-road costs. That's $2,500 more than the standard ES grade and you're really only getting style changes. Compared to the better equipped Seltos, this is the more affordable option, but compared to its Chinese rivals, it is starting to feel a little bit pricey now. The standard equipment for the ES Street includes wide Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a full suite of LED external lights and a reversing camera. And the ES model now comes with lane departure warning, but the full specs are in my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au if you need more info. The ES Street does not change the fundamentals for the ASX, but there are some distinct styling differences. You see that mostly in the grille and the rear bumper with the black and red accents, the black 18 inch alloy wheels and the door handles and side mirrors, but you also just see it in the sporty decals across the body of the car. Do I think those differences deserve the $2,500 price hike? No, but it does make it stand out from the pack. There's not much difference between the standard ES grade and the ES Street when it comes to the interior cabin. You do get a differently shaped traditional gear shifter that has aluminium inserts and a leather wrapped steering wheel, which is a nice upgrade from the standard plastic one. The dashboard is headlined by the tried and true eight inch touchscreen multimedia system. But this is a vehicle that loves its tradition and you're going to find lots of buttons and dials and even the handbrake to play with. There's no push button start. It is a turnkey operation in here and there's no digital instrument panel. If you need to change or move something, it is going to be a manual adjustment. There is something quite simple and charming about that for me though. Up front, it's quite spacious and I have plenty of head and leg room in this car. And you're also not jostling for elbow room when you have a front passenger as well, which is great. The cloth seats look quite nice. They don't offer a lot of comfort for longer trips because they lack any lumbar support. So I did find on the longer trips, I got a little bit of fatigue in this. Individual storage is really good for the class. You get multiple storage cubbies. Plus I like how big the glove box is and how deep the middle console is. Charging options are okay with two USB-A ports and two 12 volt sockets up front, but I would have liked to have seen some faster USB-C ports or a wireless charging pad for the price hike. The multimedia system looks simple and is simple to operate. Not a lot happening with it, not a lot of customizations. It can catch the light sometimes when you're on the go, which is a little bit annoying. Outside of that, I really like that it's got wide Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it's pretty simple to operate. However, the phone quality connection is pretty bad, and it either didn't connect properly and it sounded crackly, or you just sounded really tinny on the other end of the phone. I'm 168 centimeters, and behind my driving position, I have a good amount of leg room. Headroom's fine. If I was taller, I would find this to be a squishy fit back here. The seats are what you might expect, firm, you sit on top of them. You'd be okay on a longer journey if you had to be, but they're not super comfortable. You may bang your head or your knees trying to get into this row though, because the door aperture is quite narrow. There's plenty of room for two car seats if you have a couple of kids in tow. And I do like that you get a fold down armrest with two cup holders. But other than that, uh, amenities are extremely bare in this row. The boot aperture is really wide in this model, and that means that it's really easy to slide larger items into the back here. And the boot capacity is really good for the class at 393 litres. You can bump it up if you fold the rear row to 1,193 litres, and the rear row has a 60-40 split, which also opens up your storage options. 
Underneath the level loading space, you get a space saver spare tire. And while this model doesn't get a powered tailgate, this lid isn't heavy to operate. If you're a young kid though, they may struggle a little bit. The ES grade has a two litre four cylinder petrol engine, which produces 110 kilowatts of power and 197 newton meters of torque. It's not what I'd call zippy, but it's plenty for the urban environment. The ES Street has a front wheel drive drivetrain and a continuously variable transmission, but you can option to a manual transmission in the base GS grade if that's more your vibe. The ES Street has enough power to feel within the realm of fun when it comes to city driving, but you do notice a real lack of power when you hit the open road. It's gonna get you to where you need to go, but it's gonna complain quite loudly while you're driving it. And if you have to put your foot down, a few whines will be heard. The suspension sits on the right side of firm. So you do get quite a bit of road feedback in it, but you're not wincing when you're going over bumps. The only thing I really noticed in this car was how light footed it feels when you get hit by winds, especially when you're at higher speeds. The car really shifts around in the lane, which I didn't enjoy at all. Road noise isn't too bad in this. You get a little bit of wind noise and a constant hum from the engine, but your senses are certainly not battered after a long trip in this, which is nice. The steering of this is pretty responsive and it's got a small footprint, so it is almost stupidly easy to park. And even though the reversing camera isn't the best quality, it doesn't really bother you. The official combined fuel cycle consumption figure is a low 7.6 litres per 100 kilometres. But my real world usage came out at 9.1 litres. I have done a fair mix of open and urban road driving this week. And I'm not super surprised at that figure, but I am a little bit disappointed at the efficiency for such a small SUV. Based on the official combined fuel cycle figure and the 63 litre fuel tank, you should see a theoretical driving range of up to 829 kilometres, which is really good for this class. The current model year ASX has not been tested with ANCAP and is unrated, but all pre-2023 models achieved a five-star rating underneath the 2016 protocol. This model has seven airbags, which includes curtain airbags and a driver's knee airbag, but does miss out on the newer front center airbag we're seeing on newer models now. Disappointingly, the ASX is outclassed by all of its rivals when it comes to standard safety equipment. And this model misses out on some biggies like lane keeping aid, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. But the full safety specs are in my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au if you need more details. The ASX comes with a five year, 100,000 kilometre warranty, but you can extend it up to 10 years and 200,000 kilometres if you exclusively service the ASX through Mitsubishi dealers and on schedule. The cat price servicing program is excellent at 10 years and services average $502, which is all right for the class. Servicing intervals are also very reasonable at every 12 months or 15,000 kilometres, whichever occurs first. The Mitsubishi ASX ES Street more than handles being an urban dweller. The street accessory pack makes it stand out and the cabin is pretty practical for such a small SUV. I do like some of the simple and traditional elements this model offers, but not when it comes to safety. Not in this day and age against its highly equipped rivals, so it gets a 7 out of 10 from me. If you're after more details, check out the full review at carsguide.com.au and I'll see you next week.